Welcome back to Big Board. I'm back in the saddle here, uh, tenderly so, but trying to uh, make some assessments on what I'm going to do for my hapless Russians right now. Uh, this is the Bryansk pocket here, and it is officially a pocket because we have uh, this main rail uh, cut off here, and this rail here is cut off just a little bit uh, towards, that's uh, Orel just to your left over here. So uh, we don't need to really have a conversation about that so much. I've got quite a few units, unfortunately, uh, and also, uh, but also quite a bit of supply, and I still have tree bark the left that I can use to keep that pocket as the Soviet player open as long as possible. It's the beginning of the October 12th turn in the Case Blue uh, Guderian Blitzkrieg 7.2 or 7.1, 7.2 scenario. And we want to uh, have a quick look at a couple of different areas on the map to uh, really uh, uh, garner your opinions on how we might want to uh, approach things. So here we go. Uh, let's take a quick look over here, start with. Uh, pardon the camera, let's see if we can get the light. Get <clears throat> I'm not trying to smash the board as I move. Okay, where are we? This pile of muck here, a lot of these guys are basically uh, uh, pocketed off and, and, I, and I don't know that it's worthwhile trying to keep them alive. I'm better off, uh, I may be better off there trying to do a breakout if they're still eligible. Uh, and that's something I have to check on that section. I'm just coming back to this after five weeks away uh, from the table, so we we got dust on the table and uh, lots of uh, lots of challenging problems so the end of last turn for the soviets these guys used this to keep them going and i'm wondering if that's a substitute in the breakout rules uh, if that counts as being in supply or not <coughs> Sure it does. All right, we'll come back to those guys. This is not, that's, that's so the first Bryansk in this area are not the two areas I'm concerned about, uh, although I'll have to do some rule checking there. This uh, section of the map, this is Biasma here. I think I can't see the, uh, yeah, that's right, Biasma. All right, try to move this back. There's potentially an opportunity, where are my tweezers? Tweezers. It's been a while. This stuff's not any. Let's just move things out of the way. So this, this is a, these are two. Oh, it's an artillery unit. Oh no, it's a little uh, armored car dude. By the looks of it, is that armored car. I don't know what it is, what it specifically is, but it's a mechanized, uh, mechanized cavalry style unit of some sort. And infantry. So that's a defense of six. Now we don't know that as the Russians. I was planning on trying to attack that, assuming it was two fours, two four strength units there. Uh, I've got uh, quite a bit, now why am I trying to attack here? I'm trying to attack here because I really do want to try and wiggle some of these guys back up here. I don't want to have to buy uh, buy back expensive headquarters to uh, replace them because these guys are going to be out of supply uh, pretty quickly. Um, so I want to try and wiggle my guys back this way but make a counterattack on Viasma because it'll force some usage of supply. It makes good historical sense for them to want to counterattack and try and recapture this area. And it also offers a chance that if we can maneuver some, some folks up this way, that we could potentially cause some significant pain for this set of soldiers here uh, in terms of its supply uh, lines, because this is their, their supply route. It's not their supply line because they haven't converted these uh, rail lines yet. So they're going to have to count back this way. There's a throw HQ over here somewhere. Uh, right, so that's one area where I'm considering making a counterattack. Let's see what we got under here. Let's see if that's worthwhile even looking at. Uh, six, that's a 12, see? So that would be 24 and four is 28. And these bad boys, nah, it's going to be a two. Oh no, it's a four. 28, so it's 32. We were thinking it'd be 32 to 8, it's actually 32 to 6. And then I'm sure there's another 5 or so here, right? I'll flip that over. 
and that brings it up and that makes it 43. So now it's starting to look like we can really pile on in there, even though, oh, and they're not in the city hex. There you go, this is a clear hex. What do you know? The city hex is here. Okay. And, and that's got all of the 14th motorized in it. I do know that. That's pretty tough. So that hex there is a candidate for an attack. So let's do this. Where are my little tile markers? Wow, we really are just not organized today. Here they are. On the other side of the board. So we're going to consider making an attack there this turn. Now, and trying to pull as much of this back. In the meantime, these poor chaps, we're just going to let them languish uh, and, and slowly move back. There's not a lot we can do for any of these units here in terms of getting them out unless we strat move them. And even then, strategic move is not going to get them terribly far. But it's more than likely we'll try and take the better units and strat move them and leave the 11 one ones to, uh, to fend for themselves and slow down the advance from Smolensk down here. That's one area now. This area is Yev. As you can see, Yev is also. Whoa, we nearly did it. We nearly crushed the board. Yev is an interesting situation. Let me come around the other side of the board. Um, <clears throat> while we're kind of we're we're stocked up here with some. Uh, Got a few air units. Where is the supply? There is no supply. Yes, there is. There's four SP in there. And a few supporting units. And a very thin all-in move mode stack of guys. That is not all the first panzer. That's just an information counter for me. Um, there's an opportunity to try and pick on a, a discrete piece here as well. Uh, I'm not sure I would attack this hex because I think there's something strong underneath it as the, as the Soviet player. Uh, that guy needs to be clipped. And we would, uh, I think that was there. We would need to check. Yeah, we wouldn't, we probably wouldn't attack that hex necessarily, but this one definitely we would take a crack at. And this guy, we can look at down one, and that's got a four in it. We sure wouldn't try attacking that. So there's another place that we would make. Let me get some of these. Potential attack. Oh. Yeah. Right. And then finally, the last two turns for the Soviets. And I know that's not a great, uh, great shot with the shadow of the phone there, but bear with me. Um, the last two turns I've tried making attacks here with, even with units DG'd when they've been attacked, I mean, it hasn't worked out terribly well at all and, and in fact it's cost, uh, it's cost me supply that I don't want to spend for the Soviets and it has been a bit of a distraction. So I'm thinking that I'm going to just let this force sit here and it hasn't achieved anything we well, i think we because they did, the, the germans didn't use supply to defend they i think they ended up retreating a hex and i don't think we inflicted any losses uh so i'm thinking in general what I'm, and what i'm going to do here is just stay because they they have to keep this much force here to prevent me from attacking so that's a, that's a nice trade-off between the, the two forces here. And, and the Germans have now been keeping this artillery in reserve mode. Oops, I think this was back. Oh, dang it, I just moved that and I shouldn't have. Let me just see where the guy was. Here. Now, as you know, as you can just see here, uh, yeah, there is just two RD units here. Soviets don't know that. Uh, for all they know, they know it's at least one artillery unit there. But the Germans are in, a, in, the, in the midst of, of reorganizing their line. Uh, in fact, I think this is where the, atta the attack occurred and, and forced a retreat, because we pressed this unit into here. Um, 
So it's a little bit of a mess down there, but I'm not inclined to make any further attacks this turn. Uh, and I'm not sure uh, what the Germans want to do, but we're not worried about that at the moment. All right, so that's kind of what's going on in the northern sector of the board. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing here that may be too early is up around Moscow. Let me come back over here. Up around the Moscow area, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm starting to build uh, additional hedgehogs here, and uh, in fact, I even built some. Uh, out of this line because I thought I was going to have time to, to build a defensive line here. I may have time to build the defensive line. I don't have enough forces to man it. So we're going to kind of pocket trying to build hubs of defense that are in the way of uh, supply for the Germans. And this would be one area here. And then clearly uh, Kubienka would be another. So we're, we're, we're building a, some hedgehogs here. So why am I telling you all that? A, because I like to hear the sound of my own voice. Or B, I need some advice on whether to make those attacks and whether to be building, spending the SP to build these uh, defenses. And it's actually the latter, right? So uh, take your, uh, your thoughts and input on those things. Uh, if you have some opinions, some definitive opinions, uh, I know there are other things we need to be doing in terms of utilizing our aircraft efficiently. Uh, We've rolled terribly for replacements. The replacements have been awful the, uh, the, last, the first three turns of the game. Uh, one packs per turn, basically, is what it's been. And I have a plethora of dead units just in the first three turns that have died from uh, uh, either attrition or an actual combat. That's a pretty hefty uh, whack of guys that have died. So, there you have it. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon.